Hi, I'm Daniel, and before the episode starts, I want to briefly talk to you about the Garden Outreach Project, a WCF program focused on putting faith into action. Our mission is to inspire and support Christadelphians in North America to share Christ's love through outreach initiatives. This is done by facilitating national and local outreach activities, supplying resources, and providing funds to help brothers and sisters serve those in need. For example, in 2020, over 40 ecclesial groups participated in our Bags of Love initiative, which saw over 800 sleeping bags distributed to shelters and those without a home. If you, your ecclesia, or CYC want to learn more and get involved with our latest initiative, please visit our website at www.thegardenoutreach.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Garden Outreach for the latest news and encouragement. And now, here's the show. Welcome back to Little Faith. I have Josh and Seth with me. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing great. How are you? Good. I'm excited to ch- catch up with you guys and hear about this trip to South Africa that you guys went on. But before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourselves, where you guys are from, where you live, what you're doing. All right, I'll go first. So, hi, everyone. I am Seth Thomas. I am from Maryland and I go to the Baltimore Ecclesia. I am currently Still in, in college, almost done. And hello, I'm Joshua Budney. I'm from uh, Meriden, Connecticut and go to Meriden, Connecticut Ecclesia. I'm also nearly done with college, graduating in just a couple months. What we want to talk about today is you guys were on a P2P team that went to Cape Town, South Africa, kind of over the beginning of January. What were the, what were the dates again of you guys' trip? I left on New Year's Day. And we both came back, I believe we left on January 17th. So we were there for just over over two weeks. And how big was the group that was there together in South Africa? I want to say it was nearly 10 of us joining the established Cuddle Trust group of Christadelphians that's already there uh, and living there, doing the work. And what kind of work did you guys do? All kinds of different things. It, it was amazing to see all the, the projects and programs that they have in place and, and the many ways that they show you know, God's love and, and serve in their community. We did, you know, tons of different things from painting murals at creches or basically the, the word for like preschools there from doing that to doing life lessons and, and having Bible clubs and, and doing cleanups for Christ on beaches around Cape town. It, yeah, we did so many different things and, and it was, it really was amazing. It, it it felt like they were really able to give us a sense of, of all the, the projects and programs that they they have there, which was a real blessing. Yeah, it's really cool because Cuddle Trust is not just one thing. Uh, they don't focus on just like just one task or type of outreach. I mean, they're doing so many different things from like work with the kids and doing Bible lessons with them to providing food parcels to villages to our neighbors need something. So we're going to spend our morning like getting all the resources towards what they need to cleaning up the beach. If it's a way for them to be helpful and for them to use their resources, they'll do it. And so we got to be a part of all of those different things, which is cool. What was the flight like getting over there? Was that the farthest either of you had ever flown? It was definitely the furthest I've, I've flown on a single flight. Yeah. It, it, it was, it was really nice to, a guy flew with Becca, my, my girlfriend, Becca and Twistle, on the way there. And then I sat with with Josh. We were able to get seats together on the way back, which definitely helped, you know. But yeah, it was it was quite long. The the flight there was like 13 and a half hours to Addis Ababa in, in Ethiopia, and then like another five and a half down to Cape Town. And the flight back was, I think, like 16 hours into Newark. I laughed with Jess because Jess and I went to South Africa in 2008. And they didn't even have like the, that flight, that 16 hour flight available. Technology was not available for that. <laughs> so uh, like the dreamliners that you flew on are kind of new. It was definitely a little intimidating. You know, it's a 15 hour trip from New York city to Cape town. And so, you know, you're only going to be there for two weeks. 
and it's a seven hour time difference. And so it's like, am I really going to be able to throw myself in and be on my feet after like such an extended period of travel? But right. you really just put everything you have into it and make it work. Right. What, what were your first impressions of the country? I think like very first impression is it's like beautiful as you're, you're flying in, you can see the outline of, of Table Mountain and, and Lion's Head and, and, you know, right along the, the coast and, and, you know, kind of from far away, it's like, wow, this is amazing. Like God is amazing. Look at his creation. And it was beautiful, like flying in. And then as like, you know, immediately as we're, we're picked up from the airport and, and we're driving, kind of have to go around the, you know, just the outside of the city, suburbs around it to get to our host's home. And yeah, it, it's just very like immediately, it's so striking, the complete contrast in in the like quality of, of life. You know, you, you'll have these communities of, of shacks with tin roofs and and you look a little bit further and you'll see the skyline of you know the skyscrapers in the downtown or these you know other these communities of, of smaller but nice homes with all their fences and and gates up and it it definitely you know is is quite eye opening in that sense of of the disparities in wealth and and you know in a lot of things in even just immediately after getting there I think you're saying the the contrast between well off and poor is very like clearly defined and it's it's hard to bridge that gap. And so that was one of the harshest things is you you get there and it's a beautiful place, but you are like hit in the face immediately driving past these these they call them townships, which is just this like these seas of of tin shacks and and just people on top of each other. And it's very it's very striking. It's the, the best way I can describe it is life is very very real. There's no sugarcoating anything there. I mean, you see the reality for a lot of people and, and just that it's a daily struggle for a lot of people to live. And so that was a theme I think throughout our time is like you're, you're hit with the reality of what people have to go through to live here. Yeah. That contrast is extreme. Just <clears throat> my, my memory is kind of that feeling of going in from a like hot tub to a cold pool, like how often that it's just very jarring uh, to see the disparity so close together, especially. What were your personal highlights for the two weeks there? I can recall a few moments that really stuck out to me. And and we actually, this was another thing that I really enjoyed, but we had these kind of debriefing or, or reflection uh, sessions at the end of each week. Um, and, and so we'd talk about, you know, what what were our favorite things? That was really nice to to like take some time to reflect and share see how much things meant to people. And when we did that, some of the things that came to mind for me that really stuck out were the the cleanup for Christ. So Cuddle Trust has been over the past, I think just over only the past couple months, they started to do these things called cleanups for Christ. And basically they'll just take a bunch of, of trash bags. You don't really need much more than that. And go to a beach or to a park and they will just start picking up trash. And, and we all had these matching t-shirts and they say, they say the good news of the kingdom of God on the front and uh, Christ cleanup is coming soon. And it says Hebrews 10, 24 on the back. And it was amazing to see, you know, all, all the, the people who, who took notice and who asked said, Oh, like, what is, what is the, the group that you're with? you know, what, why are you out here like picking up trash? And there were actually people who would come over and ask if they could, if they could have a bag and, and would help clean up as well. And it was just, it, it for me personally, it, it, it led into quite a few really meaningful conversation, conversations with people about what I believe and, and why I was doing that. And, and it was really, it was really amazing and inspiring to see, you know, how we can be a witness um, to God and, and show God's love and, and, you know, have opportunities to talk about our faith by even just doing something as simple as, as picking up trash, uh, on a beach. And is is definitely something that if I've already talked with uh, my Ecclesia about, but trying to, to do 
that here, you know, with my ecclesia and, and with our community here in, in the U.S. But that that really stuck out to me. There there was one time we had one evening we did it. We probably did a, a couple um, of the cleanups. And one evening, it was about an hour. It was a really, really busy beach. I believe it was a Saturday night. And we must have had like 25 bags of trash that we had collected, a group of maybe 10 of us or so, and some really good conversations. And we filled up the whole back of, of the truck, the bed of the truck. Yeah, it was amazing. When you ask about highlights, I think there's a few things that stand out to me. One moment in particular that seems kind of like innocuous, but I think will always stick with me is it was after playing games with the kids in one of the villages that we worked with one day that I was tasked with, I was given a bag of apples and I had to cut them up and then go and distribute them to the kids after playing. You know, it was a hot day in the sun and they, they do like to give some sort of like food treat after because... Like they said, these kids at the end of the day think with their bellies and they they need something to eat. And so I just take these apples and I walk back to the village and (laughs) this kid had kind of befriended me. He was like 10. I think his name was Mirin. And he was telling me about how he wanted to be a firefighter and all this funny stuff. He had, he was just a really funny, like bright kid. And he became my guide in making sure every kid got an apple slice. And so I was completely leaning on him to like translate for me to Afrikaans. And he would like show me where there'd be more kids who would want apples. So I'm just following him around and like, we're, we're just kind of joking around with all these kids and you get like a little following of people all just walking around. And it was in like that moment, just in that hour, you know, you're having fun with these kids. And all of a sudden, I think the distance between you and, you know, some of these kids is just so minimal because you just appreciate like their humanity and they're just like teasing you and teasing each other and and they're just joking around and they're just kids. And it was like a really sweet, positive memory amidst like a lot of problems and things that they face. And so that'll always stick with me. Another thing that was so cool to, to witness and be a part of was Seth mentioned that a big part of what we did was we worked on upgrading this creche or this preschool. And what was so wild about this is this preschool was run by this couple and they were amazing and so selfless. They support this preschool for this local village completely of their own funds and they are not well off, but they've poured their entire life and every resource they have into giving these kids a place to just learn and like grow. And so they take very little salaries, like they're scraping by in and of their own situation, but they take kids in without them being able to pay school fees because many can't. And when you're just talking to them and seeing their love for their the work that they're doing and how appreciative they are to have volunteers coming out of the woodwork to like come paint this school and give it the things that it needs. So these kids can actually have like a positive environment is amazing. And like, there's so much to learn from that. I think like we, as Christadelphians were, we, we have a very strong sense of a moral compass and, you know, we want to want to do good and want to be selfless and pour ourselves into helping others. And it's just amazing to witness that from people like this couple, they're not Christadelphian. I, I think they may, have some sort of Christian faith, but that in and of itself, I don't think is why they do what they do. They just, they see the need and this is their passion and it's incredible to, to be a part of. One other moment that really stuck out to me, it was the first week and we had gone to a brother's home, my brother in the Ecclesia in Cape Town, a brother Asumani. And he lives probably like 45 minutes or so from where we were staying. And he lives in this very small, not quite a shack, but, you know, not much more than that. And, and very small home with his, his family, his, a bunch of kids and they were all really sweet. And so we, we went there because he had a a bit of a, like a shed in the back of his, home that he he wasn't using and and was happy for us to to take down and, and kind of break apart and what we did is so we we did that and in place of it we planted a veggie garden so it, it was myself and ben link and michael and llewellyn two of the the people who 
are the do cuddle trust full time. And they went out to grab some, to go buy some soil, some topsoil for the garden that we we're planting. And Ben and I stayed back and we were still shoveling out some of the dirt deep enough to, to start putting some of the soil and rocks in and we're shoveling away. And brother Asumani comes out and he has a tray and on the tray, he has um, some glasses and some juice and um, a bag of, of chips. And he comes out and I'll never forget this. He was singing brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me oh, be wow. as Christ to you as he's, like walking over to us with this this tray of of with the the juice and the chips it was such a special moment and really like hit me like how much you know how much it meant for him to to serve us in in that way and and how like how much the the, the words to that song the opportunity to to be Christ like and and to show Christ's love to to show God's love to 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 others, how much it meant to him. And, and it was just, it was really special. And, and Ben and I joined in, in song with him and, and it was very eye opening. You just see how much, you know, it, it all means, you know, how much it, it meant to him. And, and it's definitely something that, that I will never forget. How do you think you'll be affected by this? Like you guys have been only home for like a week or two. Your answer would probably be different in a year. What kind of takeaways for your own belief or faith journeys have you taken from this experience? First of all, it's hard to appreciate the poverty that is out there and the harsh like difficulty of life that people have to experience without actually like diving in and meeting them and being a part of it. And I, I was left with an appreciation of like what I have in ways that I d- didn't even realize I would. For example, we spent one morning playing soccer with some kids in one of the local villages. And, you know, I look around and we're just kicking the ball around in this, this dusty field and there's some thorns and there's some trash and broken glass in the fields. And I realized shortly after we started playing, like, okay, some of these kids have flip flops on. Most of these kids are barefoot and I'm in these like nice Nikes from Kohl's and I don't have to worry about what I'm stepping on. And I, I start noticing like these kids, they're just happy to be playing soccer, but they'll stop and they'll like pull glass shards out of their feet, toss them to the side and then keep playing. And I was just like, I felt so guilty to have my shoes on at that moment, but it, it was, that was just like one small thing that I appreciated. like wow, I will not take these for granted. Just the fact that I have shoes and access to them. And there were many more examples like that, but that one really stood out to me. It's something that I won't forget and, and something, a way in which my eyes have really been opened from the experience has been, you know, just focusing on on serving and focusing on showing love and, and meeting the need um, that is there to be met in, in your community or, or nearby your brothers and sisters, even just showing kindness in your general community, like what a wonderful way that is to preach. I don't think that was something that I had ever really appreciated before. And just seeing, you know, and, and being reminded of, you know, like I mentioned earlier, when, when we're, on the beach, picking up trash, you know, you might think, okay, we're not actually, you know, we're not giving out leaflets. We're not giving a lecture, but like living by example, as, as Jesus, it is, is such a wonderful way of preaching. And it was amazing to, as I mentioned, to see the opportunities to talk about our faith from that. There was another instance where we were helping the, the cuddle trust. They'll do these great things. They'll do, they call them random acts of kindness. And, you know, it's kind of what they are. The, the, People 
in Cuddle Trust that live a little bit outside of a little bit further outside of Cape Town in, in Hopefield. It's like a smaller town. Their one of their neighbors are basically they're farmers. They have a ton of sheep. And and one morning we spent, you know, mucking out a sheep stall, which is something I hadn't done before. But you know, we as we were talking with these these two this this couple who live there and and they're a bit older, so it. It's not very easy for them to to do all that work. It, it takes them a long time. And in just in conversation, it came up like, "Wow, like you Americans are are so kind." And I kind of just made a little comment about, you know, it's not about there's nothing to do with us being American. Like it, it's you know, we're just trying to show the love that that you know God shows, shows. us. And and like little things like that, it, it was neat. And later on, they had us over for lunch later that day. And we were talking a little bit about our, our faith and, and what we uh, believe. And it was, it was just really neat how, you know, us kind of, you know, showing that we care, you know, helping was kind of open the door for us to have those, those meaningful conversations uh, about our faith. And, and even if you don't have those conversations or they don't open doors to actually talking about your faith, you are still showing it, you know, you're, you're still letting your light shine and you're, you are sharing your faith. You are manifesting God in, in that way, you know, regardless. Yeah. The actual kind of fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, right. These look, putting those things in, in practice, right. It's a very natural lead into the conversation of why, why do you act that way or live that way? Seth, one thing that I think both of us really appreciated and the rest that were in our group was um, we spent two weeks with some incredible driven inspirational people we, we spent our time with it you know they're, they're one big extended family and the way that they pour themselves into their work and this is like their full-time job is just astounding leona if you're listening, I don't understand how you're like up past 11 and yet have the porridge ready by 6 a.m. I <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> and I already had a reading do done. Woke up at like 4.30 every morning. She's like, oh, you guys weren't doing your daily readings every day? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, when were you? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, I mean, that's just a wonderful thing to be around. And, and I know I I took so much from the people that we were with. And I, I love finding new spiritual mentors wherever I am. And, and I honestly um, see the wonderful brothers and sisters there as new spiritual mentors in that sense. And, and I think it's just a, a lesson in how we can really pour ourselves into whatever it is we're doing. And you don't have to like move to a place with a lot of need and be out there feeding villages and teaching kids full time to like still be doing God's work every day in your life and to still be able to pour yourself into something, you know, find ways in your own community and in your own ecclesia to still be that like beacon of light and that, that, you know, ball of energy and service. And I know I've left there with this, like just new desire to really want to do that in my home ecclesia. Yeah, there are fantastic people. Um, I love what you said about role models. It is so critical to find that spiritually kind of looking for, you know, those people that that we can model after, you know, try and find the same inspirations and make the same applications to our lives. So let's talk about P2P. This was, this was actually an interesting ending, I think, to a project like you, you guys both and the other people who would, most of the other people who attended who went down to South Africa with you attended uh, P2P in Portland in the summer of 2019. And then obviously this, this trip kind of was canceled in, it was supposed to be summer 2020. Right. And there's like 25 of you that were going to go. Yeah. We were happy to, to see this kind of completed in a way, I guess, two and a half years after your, your training in 2019. Was there anything from that time that you guys had in, in 2019 that you remember and that we kind of applied to your time? in South Africa? Something that we talked about and, and focused on during that week in, in Portland that I found helpful was was just the time that we spent trying to understand our own like preaching styles. 
we did a few little, you know, questionnaire things. I don't remember what, exactly what they were all called, but you know, the, the color test thing and, and, but even some that were more specific to, to preaching, which was, you know, not that I was actively thinking about that while I was there, but I think I remember them, them being impactful when I, when we did that in 2019. And, and I think was important in, in realizing that, you know, there are a bunch of different preaching styles and, and everyone, you know, shares their faith, manifests their, their, their faith in different ways. And I, I thought that was helpful and, and definitely, you know, helpful to me in that I'm someone who I, I, I like talking about it, but I think I also like to, to show to show my faith in the the passion and, and excitement that I have for for life and and doing my best to to live like Christ and and we had talked about like playing sports and doing activities with the kids and kind of in little ways trying to connect it to something spiritual or, or some spiritual lessons from you know games like soccer or like volleyball and things like that and and I definitely tried to, not that I was, you know, giving him a Bible lesson on the soccer field, but I remember there was one instance where I pulled a, um, pulled a kid aside after it was one of the older kids. He was probably like 12 or 13 and just thanked him for being so kind with all the younger kids. And, and for, you know, he was, he was very good, but he made like a very conscious effort. And I could tell to like pass and to share. And, and, you know, I, I just, pulled him aside and, and, and thanked him for like for being a like really amazing example to the younger kids in the township. And, and I think maybe that idea in the back of my head was, you know, it was kind of something that we talked about um, when we were in Portland. Yeah. I like that. I, I think another thing from Portland that actually didn't click until our time in South Africa a couple of weeks ago was we, we spent so much time in our training, like, trying to determine what are, what are our strengths? What are we good at both in our personality and in like our abilities? And I didn't fully appreciate how important it is to like play to your strengths until we were, we spent two weeks doing like a whole range of different activities. Some of which you are like better at and feel like you can contribute a lot to and other things like puppet shows that you are <laughs> unsure of if this is really for you <laughs> and um i'm very thankful to those that are great at puppet shows and and so i think understanding the importance of like everyone has tremendous different abilities and to a don't feel bad if like something isn't your forte but b like find what is and go contribute in that and i think that's a great lesson for really anything in life but especially in our ecclesias you know, some are going to be better at interpersonal things, you know, the counseling and, and checking in with members, others will be better with the more service oriented work. And like, both are phenomenal and, and both are necessary. So for yourself, like, find what that is, that where find where your strengths lie, and use that like to your advantage and don't like, feel bad about maybe what your strengths aren't. So that's something from training and from our time that I think I away. Yeah, you hit on one of my favorite things. I, I think it's a spiritual concept that we kind of have this, I think we have this idea that we need to round out our characters and like increase ourselves where we're weakest. We like, we call that like personal growth. I think the, the, the Bible is clear too, that we're given talents, right? And we're different parts of the body and we should lean into those things. And if you're trying to, you know, do personal development, what if you try to get even better at the thing you're already good at? you know, and trust your brothers and sisters or your ecclesial members to, to do the, the things that they're good at, kind of lean into teamwork. There's a lot to be said for like, yeah, focusing on what you can do and doing it. Thanks so much for your time, guys. I was, and thank you again for, for taking the time to go to South Africa. Yeah, thank you, Levi. And like, just tremendous thank you and well wishes to those we spent time with. And if anyone ever has the chance to work with or promote or fundraise for cuddle trust in any way i mean like we cannot vouch for them more it's just a wonderful group of people doing great work